Hi everyone, so this is the very first video in the series of Primavera P6 tutorial. So this is just an introduction video where we will not be understanding much about the technical thing related to Primavera, but we will just be understanding the basic interface, user interface of this software, what this software is all about, what all you can do with this software and what will be the outline of our video series. Okay, so this video series will consist of almost 30 videos and I'll be covering the in-depth details from beginning to advanced level for Primavera P6 and I'll be touching upon all the key concepts related to this software. Okay, so let us start. First of all, Primavera P6 is one of the most widely used softwares that is used for the project management or the construction management, I would say. So uh, not only in India, but also in so many countries, the software is in use. And if you learn this particular software, then definitely your market worth will increase like anything. So see, this is how your window looks like for Primavera P6. So the bar on the top is called as tools bar and you have several tools available here. The right side uh, bar that you see here is called as the commands bar. And here you have some basic commands like adding or inserting a new activity or a new project or a new WBS. What is activity? What is project? What is WBS? This will be learning sequentially. So need not worry about the technical terms right now. Then how to delete something, how to cut something, how to copy something. Then you will also learn about predecessors, resources and everything. On the very left hand side, there is one bar and this bar is called as directory bar. Okay. And at the bottom, you can see that this is your detailed view. What is detailed view? Detailed view is nothing, but suppose if you uh, want to update some changes to your activities or to your project or to your WBS, then you can in detail uh, make these changes through this particular single window. So this is a very important window for all the users of Primavera because you can, it is a uh, one place window where you will get all the features related to a certain uh, aspect like for activity or for project or something like that. Okay. So uh, uh, after the introduction, we will have the video related to OBS. OBS is nothing but your organizational breakdown structure where you will be defining the uh, hierarchy of the top management for your organization. So you can just go to enterprise and through OBS, you will be able to define that. Then after that, we will have one video related to EPS, which will be your enterprise project structure, uh, which is nothing but the divisions under your particular company. For example, if you have a very big company, which is handling projects related to uh, your, uh, I will go to projects and see, like suppose Wales company is there. It is handling projects related to energy services, then your construction, then your maintenance and your technology services. So this is called as EPS, basically defining the uh, hierarchy of the organization in terms of its division. So this is called as EPS. You can go to enterprise and you can go to your uh, enterprise project structure to create this. We'll be understanding it in the third video itself. Okay. So uh, we'll be taking one example, then we will proceed to creating a new project. We will create one new project, which will be your IT building construction. This will be the sample project that I'll be taking with 13 number of activities under civil works, finishing and your MEP works. This is a real time project and although a short project, but it will help you to cover the complete aspects of Primavera P6. Okay. How to create a new project. You can simply go to uh, enterprise projects and then you can click on this plus button or you can click on uh, insert button from your keyboard or you can use control plus n okay after creating of the new project we will create the wbs which is your civil works your finishing this is the packages under which your activities will come and your mep works these three are the wbs work breakdown structure okay then afterwards we will add we will be adding these certain activities under the respective wbs like site clearance excavation foundation column and slab will come under civil works similarly your painting earth filling brickwork doors windows and plastering will come under finishing and for mep it will be plumbing electrical and handover okay so this will be about adding the activities. Then we will understand some settings which are here in the detail view related to activities. These are very important, like what is relationship, what is resources, codes, WPS and all. 
okay then we will be understanding the uh, relationships how to assign the relationships in the sense predecessors successors you see here relationships if you click on certain activity it will have some successors as well as your predecessors how to assign these relationships you see these arrow buttons in the gantt chart so these are the relationships so how to assign these relationships then we have some constraints also okay if you go to your uh, detailed view and if you go to your uh, status then here you see that you have the option of constraints you can assign constraints to your activity similarly you can assign the constraints to your project also which is nothing but your um, finish by or finish on or after this if you have some really important constraints for some certain activities or for your project that your project should start after this it should finish on this and this date then you have to assign these constraints okay then moving on we will be assigning the calendars first of all we will be creating the calendars see if you go to this calendars option we will be creating some new calendars you see we have created one it building calendar we will be creating calendar based on our site profile like how the site runs from what time to what time it runs if you see on modify you will see the working days the detailed work hours per day it starts at 8 and then we have one hour lunch break then it ends at this particular time so we will be creating and then assigning the calendar to our project as well as to our activities we can have some uh, calendars for our resources also okay what are resources i'll be telling you further so this is all about your calendars then we will move to roles and resources what are roles roles are nothing but some designations like for example for labor it can be a skilled labor unskilled labor or maybe semi skilled labor similarly for your uh, manpower or maybe for your staff it can be designation as project manager planning manager construction manager and so on so if you see the roles then you see this is the roles that we have assigned for our staff okay similarly we can go for resources what are resources see i'll open the resources tab first of all then i'll show you what are resources resources are nothing but your labor then your staff then your material and your plant and machinery that you use for your project so first of all you will have to create your resources you see i have created helper then i have created pcc electrical conduiting then i have created one uh, construction manager with the name of ashish pandey and so on so we will have to first of all create our resources then based on the activities we will be assigning for example uh, let us say for painting if you go to the resources tab in the detailed view we see that ashish pandey who is a construction manager will be used for this particular Color activity, paint as a material will be used. Painting mason will be used. Then maybe your engineers will be used, and your planning manager will be used. So this is all about assigning the resources to a certain activity. Okay. Then we will be understanding some settings related to resources. If you go to resources, you have some detailed view here also. Then these settings I'll be understanding. We'll be understanding. Okay. Then we will move to something called as resource usage profile, and your histogram. Then your resource assignments. So if you go here. and if you click on this resource usage profile then you can see some data related to your resources in some chart format which will be used by you to analyze the resources information okay like you can analyze weekly or monthly or daily reports like what is the total cost what is the total number of units being utilized for labor or for plant and machinery and so on so this will give you some typical information for your resources okay in the form of histograms or in the form of charts we'll be learning complete uh, resource usage profile and histogram related to it okay then similarly we will be also uh, checking this resource usage profile resource leveling and so on then after that we will be moving to something called as first of all i'll switch to detailed view then we will be moving to something called as resource activity codes and resource codes so this is nothing but to filter out some certain kind of activities we have to first of all create our resource codes or activity codes then we have to assign these codes to the activities and then we can use the filter option and grouping and sorting option okay then we will move to assigning the baselines as well as creating the baselines how can you maintain a baseline what is a baseline then if you have maintained a baseline or created then how to assign the baseline okay then after assigning the baseline we will move to our progress status update if you click on certain activity and if you see the status update then you can clearly see that we have updated our status for this particular activity the original duration was this it has already crossed 4 days remaining duration is this it will get completed in 12 days it has started but finished is expected on 13th of november your budgeted units 
your actual unit spent remaining so this is how we will update the status of our activities and we will do the earned value analysis after this if you see the columns then you can see actual cost budget at completion then your cpi cost variance earned value cost all these parameters we will understand in the video related to earned value analysis or management where we will be understanding these key parameters which will help us to know the health of our project that how our project is performing in terms of cost as well as in terms of schedule parameters whether our project is doing good in budget or it's doing good in schedule or it's running behind the schedule or it's running ahead of the schedule or it's over budgeted or it's under budgeted something like that <clears throat> then we will also understand about risk what is risk how we can add the risk to the certain activities what will be their impact with respect to cost and schedule on these activities then we will also understand something called as wps and documents how can you add certain documents to your activities like if you want to add some claim letter to your activity how can you do so then we will move to something called as expenses see we have already added our uh, labor material staff and plant and machinery but if we have some overheads or if we have some extra cost related to an activity then how can we update those costs we will be learning that in expenses like it's, you can see i have added a cost of water and power which is worth 100 dollars so this we'll be learning in the video of expenses then we'll be understanding about currencies how to create your own currencies you can go to user preferences and you can see the option of currency here and then you can change your currency and if you want to update a new currency then you can go to admin then you can go to admin category sorry then you can go to currencies here admin and then currency here you see some predefined currencies but if you want to add a new currency you can do so so that we'll be learning in the video related to currencies okay then after that we will be seeing about what are admin preferences and what are admin categories so here you can do so many changes for your own sake so these will be two different videos then after that we'll be going to simply reports printing how to print your reports how to set up your page how to print preview okay then we will also seeing the option of reports from here so here is reports okay several predefined reports are available to you you can also print your own reports okay by going to this reports option okay then after that we'll be understanding something called as duration types if you go to activity and if you go to uh, let's say general then we have four duration types people often get confused with these four types of duration so we'll be understanding what are duration types okay then we'll be just exporting and importing our project like if you want to export your project to some other format like msp or maybe to spreadsheet or excel or maybe to prime aware itself then we can export and we can import from some other format to prime aware also so with this we'll be ending our video series which will be almost around 30 videos so i hope uh, the concept of primavera is clear to you that what all you can do with this particular software so we'll be touching upon every tool here you see progress spotlight then your uh, leveling of the resources then your scheduling option then your visualizer everything will be touching in detail and no option that is visible to you here will be left untouched that is a promise from me so you watch the complete video series and after this particular video series you will definitely be able to use primavera for any scale of project be it a small scale project or a large scale project so if you have any queries you can shoot your queries in the respective videos i'll be trying my level best to reply to you all also you can connect with me via linkedin or instagram or telegram i'll be attaching the links or you can go to the profile of my youtube channel and you can find those links there and do not forget to subscribe so that's all for this video thank you everyone